Hello and welcome to New Zealand's Challenge Wanaka for 2016. Perhaps the most picturesque triathlon on the planet. And for those who've competed in it, they know that it is also one of the toughest. The big names like Chris McCormack, Dylan McNeese, of course, Dougal Allen, who was second last year, Gina Crawford, who's won it six times. All the big names keep on coming back, and that's an indication of just how special this event is. And 2016 is extra special because it's the 10th anniversary of Challenge Wanaka. 10 years, it's crazy to believe how quickly it's gone. But yeah, 2007 was the first event and there were I think about 50 people. This year we had two and a half thousand people take part. We've got a great group of guys who have come to every single event. I think there's seven of them, um, including one, Stephen Bloom, who comes all the way from California every year. You know, it, it's nice to walk in and have everybody know who you are. It's like being the regular at your local, you know? I mean, it's. It's, it's that kind of feel. Um, I wouldn't say they're, it's, it's not like they're giving us any, you know, like super perks. It's just that you, you just feel like you're part of the, you're, you're, everybody is just part of the family. This will be my eighth go out of 10. So it's, it's great for the race to see how it's changed over the years, but still maintain that really friendly focus aiming at the athlete and focus on the athlete having a great experience. They haven't lost that as they've grown you can just feel the buzz around the place and I think what Challenge have done with this event over the 10 years is fantastic and you know speaking to volunteers and speaking to the locals who live here and it's such a big part of their community and such a big part of their year. Most people I know in Wanaka are, if they're not racing they are hosting athletes or they're volunteering on aid stations or they're in the marquee doing registrations I think it's 10% of the town that's involved directly with the event. There's probably another 50% out there watching it on the day, so it's probably why we've got to 10 years. About 25% of our field is international. Uh, we have a lot coming from the States, particularly the West Coast, California. A lot of Brits as well make the trip south, and of course Germans. Germany is the home for Challenge. Challenge Roth was the first ever race. It's the largest triathlon in the world over this distance. And then not many people know, but Challenge Wanaka was actually the second race in the series, and now there's 44 races in 29 countries. So Challenge Wanaka really is one of the foundations of Challenge Family, and that's, that's a great honor to have. It is really, really beautiful, the course, but it's brutally beautiful. It's challenging, there's, there's no let up in the course. You're constantly having to think, and I think that's what sort of appeals. The, the interesting thing about this course is that it, you just don't know what it's going to throw at you, and um, I've had so many different experiences here over the years. You just don't know what you're going to get. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely a tough course. It's not, it's not a, a fast, flat and easy one, with, like some of them. Um, I think it's the best running course I've seen so far in my career. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's the world's most scenic triathlon. Last year we won the TBI awards in, in Los Angeles. We won the world's most scenic triathlon. Um, and you just have to look out the window to see why. I mean, it is so beautiful. But, you know, it can be deceiving. It may be beautiful, but it's pretty tough out there. And on a windy day, it's going to be one of the hardest Challenge Wanakas ever hosted. A lot of nervous athletes around waiting to plunge into Lake Wanaka. The swim is, of course, 3.8 kilometres. The record time, 45.33. That's followed by 180 kilometres on the bike. Two loops with an extension both east and west to make up the distance. And then the final run, 42 kilometers, the marathon to finish it off. And 80% of this run is off the roads, on the trails. That doesn't make it any easier. And when they want it to be flat, there are some brutal hills in there as well. It's a real test of every triathlete out there. Okay. Right. Five, four, three, two, A relatively small five. professional field, but there is lots of quality in there and Dylan McNeese expected to establish his authority fairly early on 
always first out of the water. He's the only man to have won this event three times, and he's done it in successive years. This year, he's looking for win number four and already establishing an early lead with his surfing background. The rough conditions certainly suiting Dylan, but he won't appreciate the fact that the course has had to be shortened slightly, so his advantage somewhat diminished. The chasing group, including Dougal Allen, are likely to be a minute or so closer to McNeese this year. You know, Dougal, we chat about his swimming all the time, we joke about it, but he's actually made some real gains this year and I've seen him in the water and it's a little bit daunting for me, but you know, if his, if his swims improve, what's happened to his bike and his run, so there's, that's the great thing about our sport, you've got to balance the three. This sport's still relatively new to me. There's three sports in this race and I nailed one, did pretty well in the other and just lost too much time in the swim. Um, so my whole approach to this year's race has been around um, picking up my pace, especially in that swim, uh, which means I've come to this year's race feeling like I don't have to play all my cards on the bike um, because I've got cards to play in all three now. The age groupers getting underway and a good turnout this year from 50 in 2007. They're up to two and a half thousand competitors in the various events now at Challenge Wanaka. And that is the sign of a really successful event and everyone experiencing the same tough conditions. Dylan McNeese has coped well with the waves out there. Still a phenomenal swim time. And because of the slightly shorter course, he's even quicker than the 45.33 that he did last year. This is going to be sub 44 minutes for the swim course. And a tightly packed chase group. We've certainly got Graham O'Grady in there. Mike Tosic of Germany is there as well, a very good cyclist. And Dylan McNeese leading the way, as he has so often here in Challenge Wanaka. Good crowd turning up for the finish of the swim. It's become part of the culture in Wanaka. You can see the treble cone mountains in the background as he makes his way out of the lake. This, of course, the end of the Southern Hemisphere season, the beginning of the European season. So those who've travelled south from the Northern Hemisphere Really bold undertaking to take on a race of this length. So McNeese, as usual, with a lead after phase one. The question is, what will the time margins be? So we've got Dylan McNeese at 43.30, closest to him out the water. Graham O'Grady, who's two minutes 13 behind. Mike Twells at 5.14 behind. And then Anna Cleaver coming out just ahead of Dougal Allen. And Dougal Allen, 11 minutes off the pace of the leader. But remember, that's some six minutes closer than he was last year. And he only finished some three and a half minutes down on McNeese in last year's race. So Dougal Allen at this moment will be feeling very, very good. Van Vlieken just going into the transition as the lead men head out onto the road. 180 kilometres. It is certainly the most spectacular bike ride of any triathlon in the world. But for the athletes, it's head down, 100% focus on the job ahead. And McNeese trying to make it four wins out of four here in Wanaka. And he knows these roads like the back of his hand. He comes from Christchurch originally. Twelzik in second place, known as the GCM, the German cycling machine. And between him and Dougal Allen and Joe Skipper, McNeese could be in for a hard ride. I mean, the, the actual field is quite small, but I was looking at it yesterday and I think there's six, six maybe seven people who potentially could, could win the race. Yeah, you can lose or win a race on the bike course. So, yeah, like Mike Twersik, Joe Skipper, and yeah, of course, of course Dave McNeese and Dougal Allen, they, they're all really good cyclists. So it will be, yeah, it will be interesting what, what, what is coming out on Saturday. I, I was saying to my auntie, I think it's, it's going to come down to the run, and whoever's got the best legs when they, when they start the run is going to come out on top. I think you could get someone come from 10 minutes behind and, and still win it if they're feeling good at the start of the run. I think definitely with the guys, it must be the strongest field ever seen at Challenge Monica. So 
the race kind of deserves that, right? Because this is their 10th anniversary. With the girls as well, I think it will be a very tight race between uh, Lara, Gina and me. How it's going to turn out on race day, gosh, who knows? Please tell me that. That would be great. But, um, you know, it's so hard to predict because over the long distance races and again on this sort of course, you really don't know what's going to happen. And to be honest, you can't really focus on what anyone else is doing. Um, you know, you've just got to be, again, conscious of what you're doing and your race and controlling what you can control and, and how you ride the course or how you run on the terrain and just being being tuned in to what you can deliver. Laura Siddle making her way through the town. She came out of the water alongside Yvonne van Vlerken. But the Dutch athlete that much quicker in transition, gaining a lead of some 26 seconds. So tight in the women's event. And there is the reigning champion, Gina Crawford, looking to make it win number seven. But at the moment, sitting down in third place. And her cadence is not what you would expect. Now, she said she was tired going through transition one, said she wanted a sleep. I wonder what's going on with Gina Crawford today. She is not herself. Well, hopefully she'll come back to life as the race goes on. Dylan McNeese still out in front in the men's race, so business as usual as far as he's concerned. But news from further back on the field that he is being caught by Dougal Allen. No surprise there, but he's also being caught by Twelzik. Dougal Allen making his way away from Lake Wanaka. Remember, he set the record time on the bike last year. The same again this year, and it should see him ahead of Dylan McNeese because he was six minutes quicker in the water. A local man who desperately wants to win here in Wanaka. Well, it's good cadence, good speed. And Twelzik passing Dylan McNeese, who has just gone through the dead turn, and the dead turn only 400 metres away. So Twelzik just 800 metres or so behind the reigning champion. And that will be encouraging news for Twelzik. He'll enjoy that, a big boost as he heads back towards Wanaka. He knows he has the defending champion in his sights. And living in Arizona, I suspect he's used to riding in these sort of wins. Great Britain's Laura Siddle riding down the race leader, Van Vlerken. And she's on the same sort of schedule that she set last year when she finished in second place behind Gina Crawford. That was a great race by Siddle, but I think uh, she looks in better shape this year. Van Vlerken made to look slow as Siddle goes through. Well, this sets up a fascinating situation. I think the British athlete knows she needs some three or four minutes at least on Van Vlerken when it comes to the start of the run. And with Crawford struggling, these two have a brilliant opportunity. The men on to their second lap of the bike ride in Challenge Wanaka and Twelzek of Germany is catching the defending champion Dylan McNeese. Four minutes 30, the difference on lap one. McNeese is in trouble. You know, it's, it's scary for me because Wanaka sort of defines me as an athlete and my whole career. So um, the thought of not winning is, uh, is very scary. And like I say, I don't really know until I get on the bike, you know. The swim is the swim for me. It's, it's my natural strength. So, I, you, know, um, you know, I could be having a bad day, but I don't lose so much. Whereas on the bike, if I have, have a bad day, it's, it's all over. So yeah. Wanaka just has defined my career so far and, and I want it to keep doing that. And, and I love racing here. So, um, yeah, nervous, excited, scared, all those, all those words. 
And at 95 kilometers with 85 of the bike ride still to go, Twelsic goes past Dylan McNeese without any trouble whatsoever. That's a margin of 514 that he's pulled back since they came out of the water earlier today. And the worst news for McNeese is that Dougal Allen is riding even faster than Twelsic. Per Bittner being overtaken by Matt Russell and Matt Russell of the United States having a very good ride as well not far off the pace set by Twelzik and Dougal Allen here is Dougal Allen he's moved up into second place ahead of Dylan McNeese and is now chasing Mike Twelzik of Germany and those two riding pretty much at the same speed in the early stages of the race who will save something for the run Who's pushed too hard on the bike? We will find out over the next three hours or so. Into T2, the all-important transition. And it's Mike Twelzik who is first in. And Dougal Allen, the local man. The German is away. A tricky little start to the run. A steep ramp just to sap even more energy out of the legs. The watch is set and Dougal Allen is on the chase. Well, here comes Dylan McNeese. He's used to leading at this stage of the race. He looks a little bit dejected. Quickly into his running, McNeese, and the crowd may help him a little, but he is not himself. Three times he's won this race. It looks as though he's going to struggle today, but a long way to go, and a lot can happen. Mike Twelsick again gets another split, two minutes behind, they say. It's a little more than that. But there is, of course, the chance that Dougal Allen is closing. Allen's a great, uh, he's a great cyclist, certainly his strong, strong leg. But he ran pretty well here last year and he trains on these tracks twice a week. He knows every inch of this course and it has to be an advantage of some sort. In the women's, Laura Siddle, good solid ride from her. She actually went ahead at 80 kilometers, then lost her chain and had to play catch up all over again with Van Vlerken, who is still on her case. And Van Vlerken, the more fluent runner, lighter body weight, that is certainly gonna pay off on this Haley Wanaka course. Well, good tempo from Yvonne Van Vlerken in the black, looking for and chasing down Laura Siddle. Well, that's some impressive running in the early stages. Usually clocks about four minutes 10 per kilometer at the end of a triathlon of this length. And it has not taken long for Van Vlerken to close down that three and a half minute gap on Laura Siddle. And even better news for the Dutch triathlete is that Gina Crawford, the six time winner here, has pulled out due to illness. There's been something wrong with Gina Crawford all day. Credit to her for giving it a go, but it just hasn't happened. So she's lost her title once again. Van Vlerken taking not one, but two drinks. And if she can keep that pace going, she's certainly gonna win by some margin. Great support for the local man, Dougal Allen, who is now the race leader. He went ahead at 14 kilometers and making light work of Gun Road Hill, which is the brutal part of the course. And Mike Twelsick now relegated to second place and now reduced to walking as the gradient increases. Well, that is handing this race to Dougal Allen on a plate. He's over the top of the hill and surely heading for his first victory, third in 2014, second in 2015. It should be a victory, provided he can keep this pace going. Well, what a race it's been from Dougal Allen. All started with that great swim. Here's Matt Russell, who's gone ahead of Dylan McNeese and actually clocking the best time out on this final stage. Great run from the American, two times American duathlon champion. And he won Ironman Canada as well. That was back in 2012. So he knows about dealing with these sort of distances. And Dougal Allen 
relatively inexperienced, has learnt and learnt and learnt, and every year he comes back, he shows us that he has improved. Nine minutes quicker than last year as he heads down the home straight. Eight of those minutes, improvement in the water. I know the course was slightly shorter, but a brilliant performance in the water from Dougal Allen, which really set him up for his PB here in Challenge Wanaka. And look what this means to the local man. Months and months of hard work, years of thinking about this race and thinking how he is going to win it. Finally, he has achieved it. A massive release for Dougal Allen, who is Challenge Wanaka champion for 2016. I don't know, I can't really put it in words. You wait for this moment all your life, but when it actually happens, it sort of, it stuns you really. I, I back myself to catch Mike. It wasn't a guarantee, but I definitely um, believed I could do it. And, uh, but Dylan McNeese, as you know, you just never write him off. So uh, I was running scared and on that first lap going back out, I saw I had about 11 minutes and even that wasn't quite comfortable because he never, he never gives up. So um, he was sort of my main concern, to be honest, and uh, I'm just so pleased to keep him at bay. And Dougal, obviously Wanaka, proud New Zealander. What does it mean for the small town? What does the people of Wanaka mean to you? <laughs> Gonna make me cry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> and that is clear for everyone to see. Mike twells it coming in to finish. He led up to the 14 kilometer stage of the run. Happy to be on the podium, happy to have it done. It was a tough, tough race. Uh, really tough condition on the bike, in the water. And the run course is also not easy. So, so happy to be in. And Matthew Russell getting third place in the men's as we go back to the women's race. And no surprise to see Yvonne van Vlerken leading the way and still running at the same pace that she set off 42 kilometers ago. It's been a brilliant performance, solid on the bike, not the quickest, but she saved enough for the run. And that's where she's done most of her damage today. Van Vlerken down the last 20 meters. The title is hers. She is the Challenge Wanaka champion 2016. Well, I just didn't expect to win here. I really wanted to win, but my preparation has been so ridiculously short. So it was just uh, a mental thing, I think. I just trusted on my run and had the most amazing swim. I don't know, I was scared of those waves, but just got the good feet. 16 years, this was my uh, 31st long distance race. And um, yeah, I just ran with my head. And finishing behind Van Vlerken, Laura Siddle of Great Britain, second last year to Crawford, has to settle for runners-up position again, but she's some nine minutes closer to the winning time. And Dougal Allen taking the men's title, 8.31.53. Mike Twelsick at 35 in second, and Matthew Russell of USA keeping Dylan McNeese off the podium. In the women's event, Yvonne van Vlerken gets her 11th iron distance victory. Laura Siddle in second place and Julia Grant, the best of the New Zealanders. And so the 2016 titles go to Van Vlerken of the Netherlands and Dougal Allen of New Zealand. But the seven men who've completed all 10 Challenge Wanakas will certainly share the headlines and the honours. Whether they're fit enough to race again next year, we don't know. But one thing's for sure, Gina Crawford and Dylan McNeese will be back hungry to regain the titles that they've lost this year. It should be a thrilling race in 2017.